Good afternoon. We are back. We're back at Richmond Beach State Park. City Park. Is it a city park? Yeah. Richmond Beach City Park in Shoreline, Washington. So we want to do another short discussion of definitions, following up on the last one. So there are two general techniques to defining a word, and we've already introduced them in the first video on definition. Intentional definitions define a word or a phrase by citing the characteristics something has to have in order for the word to apply to it. Extensional definitions define a word or a phrase by citing uh, things that the word applies to. So the things that the word applies to we call the extension of the word. Mm -hmm. So the extension of the word rock band the term rock band extension would include all the list of rock bands, Rolling Stones, Beatles, who else is there really? Yeah. Well, we're not doing that. And the extension of rock band would not include the Lawrence Welk Orchestra. It would surely not. And uh, a little tuba, tuba orchestra. Oh, yeah. no. So it's just going to list, uh, the extension is a list of all the things that that word applies to. The intention of a word is the characteristics that something has to have to be in the extension. So the intention will be characteristics. It's an abstract object. Yeah. So now, let's see. I'll make up a definition, and you tell me, Mark, if my definition is intentional or extensional, okay. and I'll try to stump you. And I'll, then I'll try to do the same to you. OK. So I'm going to define a square <laughs> as uh, a force, a plane, a, 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 a planar four-sided figure with four equal angles and four equal sides. Well, this would be an intentional, an intentional definition because you've described some character traits of it. It may be a good definition, it may be a bad one. You haven't asked me about that, uh -huh. but you've clearly given me some character traits of what you take to be a true of all squares. Mm -hmm. So it would be an intentional definition. Very good. That's right. It's the, it's the characteristics or the properties that something has to have to be a square, yeah. I would say. Shall I give you one? Sure. I'll define the word duck. Duck. A duck is a large striped feline living in India. Is it intentional or extensional? It's an intentional definition. It's not a very accurate no, one. Not very accurate, <laughs> but it is intentional. It's intentional. Okay. One of the things it doesn't do, and we're jumping ahead, of course, but it doesn't capture the essential yeah. qualities that make something a duck. Yeah. But it does provide qualities. But it is qualities so it is an intentional. That's I'll, good. I'll maybe do a better Where'd one. Where'd you come up with that? Oh, in this feeble miasma that is my mind. You're yeah. thinking it. Just okay. That. How about this? Um, you wanted to find a square. A square is something like this, like this, mm -hmm. and like this. And if you can see, there's these blue lines here. So a square is like that, and like that, and mm -hmm. like that. Well, that's clearly an extensional definition, because you're explaining a square, what the word square means, by pointing at objects that are square. And by the way, if I may go back to a quick comment, uh, the reason your definition was inadequate, of course, purposely so, was that it doesn't capture the essence of what a duck is, the essential qualities of what a duck is. And the essential qualities would be those qualities that, it, that only a duck has, that nothing else has, mm -hmm. that make it a duck. Mm -hmm. And so um, the qualities that, that make something a duck and not something else that every duck has so an essential definition or the essential characteristics would be a definition that's not too broad. It, it doesn't take in other things, and it's not too narrow. Mm -hmm. It includes all in, the, in what it's supposed to define. So I think that gives the students a taste of the extensional intentional uh, division. Okay. Those we, two types. We might point out there's a number of different ways of, of doing intentional definition or extensional definitions, also with intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, for extensional definitions, you can simply point at things. If I wanted to find what a human was, I could say something like this and something like this. That's called an ostensive definition. And I'm just kind of pointing at it. It's a pointing I could, definition. I could name some examples. A human being. A human being is something like uh, Michael Jordan, Paul Herrick, Mark Story, and Lady Gaga. Here I'm naming particular human beings as opposed to pointing at them. I can even alert people to groups of human beings. A human being is something like um, 
an American uh, person, a, a European person, an African person, a South American person, or an Asian. a North American person. Yeah, so I'm just kind of pointing to groups, mm -hmm. in this case, uh, continents, mm -hmm. if you will, of, of humans. Mm -hmm. But I'm still pointing out specific examples. So that's rather extensional. Than, rather than coming up with character traits. Mm -hmm. And there are different ways to intentionally define something, too. Yeah. The definition by genus and species is, of course, the form favored by Aristotle, the founder of logic. A genus is a larger group, and the species is a smaller group in relation to that larger group. So the definition of ice would be what? Frozen so water? Frozen water. Water might be the genus, but uh -huh. what kind of water? Frozen kind. Right. So the genus is water, the species is frozen water, and so a definition by genus and species, if you read Aristotle's original textbooks on logic would be you, you state the genus that a thing belongs to, the larger group, then you state the species within the genus that the thing belongs to and how it differs from the genus to be in that species. Now how does ice differ from water to be in the species called ice? Well, you could have gaseous water, you could have uh, solid water, you could have, or solid would be frozen water, you could have liquid water. So there's different kinds of water. So what makes ice in the species of ice it is that it's frozen, yeah. or it's solid, solid yeah. water. Solid mm -hmm. water. So uh, finally, the rules for critiquing definitions. The rules that a good intentional definition ought to follow, and if it doesn't follow, it deserves criticism. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to touch on that because we don't have a lot of time, and it's pretty self-explanatory. but you know, a definition ought to be neither too broad nor too uh, narrow. This is kind of the Goldilocks mm -hmm. rule, if you wish. Uh, I'll give you a definition and you tell me if it's too broad or too narrow. Right. Okay. This would be a real stumper. Oh, okay. Could be both. How about football is a game played on a field? Okay. Well, this would be too broad because there's lots of games played on fields. High, um, yeah. Baseball comes to mind immediately. Soccer. Soccer. So the, that definition, if we will, technically the definitions, is simply too big. It's too broad. It encompasses more than football. So we might say that, um, oh, here we go. If here's all the football in the world, games played on a field, games. This is going to be too broad. This is, there could be baseball games. Soccer games out here, mm -hmm. so it's too big. It's so too the broad. definition takes in too much. Yeah. It doesn't narrow it down to just what's football. Right. Yeah. It doesn't get at the essential characteristics of what makes something football, um, which would be the characteristics that it alone has and mm -hmm. doesn't share with others. Okay. That. Uh, <coughs> um, you want to do one? Well, how about back to my tiger? Okay. Uh, if I if I define a tiger as a cat, mm -hmm. of course, tiger. Is this, you know, here's all the tigers in the world. Cat would be too big, too broad a definition. How about if I define tiger as a fierce cat? That's gonna be too broad, also. Mm -hmm. uh, fierce, st large, striped cat presently living in India. That might be too narrow. It might be. Because you know. there might be some tigers living elsewhere. In zoos, if nothing in else. In zoos and so forth, so it'll be too narrow. Right. Mm -hmm. And the earlier ones were too broad. So your definition needs to explain the meaning of a word in a way that captures the essence of what mm -hmm. it is to, to be in the extension of the word. If it's too broad, the definition kind of slops outside tigers. If it's too narrow, I might don't, everything in here might be tigers, but there might be some tigers that don't fit the definition, mm -hmm. like tigers living in zoos in mm -hmm. Chicago, the United States. Yeah. So what you want is your definition to pick out all the tigers in the world and nothing but tigers. Then you've got right. one that's neither too broad nor too narrow. Mm -hmm. So if someone defined a human being as someone who was uh, born in the Bronx, New York, what's wrong with that? Oh, too narrow, because <laughs> there's a lot of human beings that are born outside the Bronx, I New thought York. I'd throw you a softball well, there. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So you day. get the idea. But yeah. def defining words is an art, and it's certainly part of the art of reasoning. Okay? So thank you for your time.